Hey everyone, this is John Garifano from Reactive Training Systems, and I'm here today to talk to you about how to get better at rating your RPE. So today what we're gonna talk about is what RPE actually is, or RIR. We're gonna talk about when you should rate your RPE. And last, we're gonna talk about four different tools that you can use to help you in rating your RPE. So let's talk about what RPE is. Well, RPE stands for Rating of Perceived Exertion. So the perceived part is really important because it's about your perception of how difficult something is when compared to a maximal performance. Now this was a scale that was used before powerlifting in other sports, but brought over and made famous in powerlifting by Mike Tashir. The scale goes from one to 10, with 10 being a maximal performance. You had no more weight that you could have added to the bar and you couldn't have done any more repetitions with it. It's a true grinder. A nine and a half RPE is one where you likely couldn't have done another rep, but you might've been able to add a little bit more load. A nine RPE is something that you definitely could have added more load and you probably could have done one more rep with. And the scale continues in that fashion. Repetitions in reserve is the opposite of RPE. So one RIR or repetition in reserve is literally a nine RPE because you're leaving one repetition in reserve, which is the same as an RPE nine. Now you might be asking yourself, why should you get better at rating your RPE and why should you use the tool in the first place? Well, first things first, if you're having a really good day, let's say you go into the gym, you're feeling really recovered, you get into the bar and things are just moving really fast. Are you gonna cap yourself and do what's on the piece of paper, or are you gonna add load to the bar? And that's the thing. You should have a program that scales when you're feeling really good, that allows you to add more load on the bar than what the plan says. Conversely, when your recovery isn't that great, you go into the gym and things are feeling just heavier than normal, the plan should also scale down to meet your current abilities. See, here's the thing. Your daily readiness is gonna change. It isn't logical to assume that you're gonna go into the gym and use the same loads every time you come in, or that your program is gonna go plus two and a half kilos or five pounds every single week. We just don't all recover like that. And if we did, we'd all be squatting a thousand pounds, but that's just not the reality. The reality is, is that your recovery, your rhythms are going to fluctuate on a daily basis and your program should fluctuate with them. So getting better at rating your RPE is going to allow you to put the right load on the bar for the right number of reps. All right, so now let's talk about when you should rate your RPE. A lot of people think that while you're under the bar, that's the perfect time to ask yourself, how many more reps could you have done? And I actually disagree completely. The only thing that I want my athletes to focus on while they're under the bar is the technical execution. And then when you're done, ask yourself, from a maximum performance that day, how many more repetitions could you have done? Could you have done another rep? Could you have done another two reps? And here's the thing, it's not about how heavy it felt on your back, because listen, at some point, it's just gonna feel heavy. You need to just ask yourself that objective question, how many more reps could I have done? Could I have added more load? But do that after the set is done. The other thing is, you wanna commit to the weights. And if you're asking yourself, oh, can I do another rep with this? you're going to be doubting yourself during the movement. And that is the last thing that I want my athletes to be focused on. Instead, I think you need to be focused on just technical execution, getting it done. And then when the set is done, ask yourself, how hard was that from a maximal performance? All right, so the first tool I wanna to talk about is video review. What's really cool is that we all have cell phones and gyms are being more and more accepting of us bringing phones out and videotaping our performances. So we can take video of our lifts to compare to previous weeks or even previous meets. So you can use your videos to help you in getting better at rating your RPE. The key is, is that video review is supplemental to your perception of how difficult that set was to a maximum performance that day. So you don't wanna put more stock or more value into video review than your perception, but you want it to be supplemental. Now, I recommend that when you're taking video, you rate the RPE based on the hardest or slowest part of the lift. It's very tempting 
to hit the hole in a squat, have it be really difficult, and then the top part that's really quick to say, oh, you know what, the top part was really quick, I'm gonna rate my RPE lower. I recommend that you rate it based on the slowest part or the hardest part. And the reason for that is, where are you gonna fail on your squat? You're probably gonna fail coming out of the hole when it's the hardest and slowest. I also don't recommend that you change your RPE rating, your perception, more than a half a point based on what the video is showing you. Let me give you an example. So let's say you're gonna work up to 200 kilos for a single out of an eight for the day. So you start warming up, you take 200 kilos for a single out of an eight on your squat, and it's feeling a little bit harder than what you assumed it would be. So you, your perception is it's probably closer to an eight and a half RPE than an eight. Then you watch the video. And the video is showing it's moving pretty quick, actually. You could be tempted to talk yourself into it being easier than it actually is. And I've had lifters say, mm, you know what, that was a seven and a half RPE, let me take another jump. And lo and behold, they take 205 and now it's a nine and a half RPE. So I would recommend that instead of jumping a full point down based on your video review perception, that you only go a half a point and wait for next week. Take a bigger load next week. Use the video to gauge and guide your RPE validation and your own perception. The next tool that I wanna cover is velocity-based training or VBT. Now, if you go into a powerlifting gym, it's very common to see this big box with a string attached to the bar. And really what that is, is it's a linear position transducer. And it helps to provide a measurement of how fast that bar is moving up and down. That's it. But VBT has been shown in research to be a very viable auto-regulation tool. What I do with my lifters is if they have access to a linear position transducer or even an app to measure bar speed, we'll create velocity-based tables for each of their competition lifts. So for example, let's say that you know that a single at an eight RPE is usually correlated to somewhere between 0.3 and 0.32 meters per second. That could be really helpful when you're warming up to a top set because if you're not sure, was that an RPE eight, was a seven and a half, you can look at your table and be able to see whether or not that bar speed correlates with an RPE eight or a seven and a half for you. Now, one of the things to keep in mind is that VBT is lifter and lift specific. So what correlates to a single at an eight RPE on my velocity table is not what's gonna be for you. And you, that kind of makes sense, right? If you go to a powerlifting meet, you'll see that someone will take on their third attempt a squat that moves super fast, but then you'll have others where it's a grinder. Everyone is different and every lift is different. So what's a single at an eight on my VBT table for my squat is gonna be completely different for my bench and my deadlift. Now, RPE, video review, and VBT can provide three pieces of critical information that can help you in a training session to make the next best decision. So let me give you an example. So you think things are feeling really heavy today. You rate the set that you just did around an eight RPE, but the video review shows that things are moving a little bit faster. So you watch the video back and you're like, yeah, this is moving pretty good today. Then you look at your VBT device, your linear position transducer, and when you compare the velocity of the rep that you just did to your velocity table, it looks like it's more correlated with a seven RPE than it is an eight. So now you've got two pieces of information that are showing you that you're actually performing better than your perception. That's really valuable. And what I would encourage most of my lifters to do is rate their RPE a seven and a half that day. Why? Because you have two pieces of information that are showing you that you're actually performing better. Now next week is an opportunity to get more aggressive with the loading. Maybe you did 200 kilos this week and maybe the right decision next week might be 205. But it's a really useful strategy and method to help you to put the right load on the bar and do it for the right number of repetitions. Now a couple things to keep in mind with VBT. First, it's not necessary. It can be helpful, if you have the money to spend and you want to buy a VBT device, it does provide another set of data points to help you in making the best decision possible in your training session. But many, 
strong people got strong without ever using velocity-based training. And VBT does cost money. Now, there are some really cool apps that are out there that are breaking down the barriers to entry, making it really cheap to get into VBT, but most of the linear position transducers cost a couple hundred dollars. And that isn't something that I recommend all of my athletes to go get. If they want to get one and they want to make that investment, I do think that it could be really helpful, but again, it is not necessary. Your RPE should still be the most important thing when it comes to rating the difficulty of the set that you just did. All right, so the next tool that I wanna discuss is AMRAPs, which stands for as many reps as possible. I'm sure that everyone listening to this has done an AMRAP at some point or is familiar with it, but it is a tool that can help to validate your RPE. So for example, let's just say that you're doing a set and you think that it's an RPE seven. One of the strategies that you could employ to kind of test it a little bit is to do an AMRAP with that weight and see how many reps you get. So for example, let's say you did three sets of four around an RPE seven, and then the last set you took as an AMRAP. That could help you to see, were you rating the other sets too conservative? Because if you end up getting four, five, six reps with it, well, you may be incorrect with your previous RPE ratings. And so next week, that could allow you to be a little bit more aggressive with your loading. Now, athletes can be very timid and nervous about doing AMRAPs or going really close to failure with a heavy weight. Just keep in mind that one, you don't have to take an AMRAP to a true 10 RPE. You can stop at a nine. You can put parameters in there and stop yourself at an eight or a nine. You can also use a lower percentage of one RM to do an AMRAP as well. So for example, if you were doing sets at, let's say 70%, and you did an AMRAP with that, that's going to be far less scary than taking a 90% AMRAP to a 10 RPE. So you can ease into it. There's ways to cap your RPE a little bit lower. And one of the things that I would really highlight and recommend is that you get training partners and make sure that your safeties are set if you wanna use this tool. But it can be very useful in informing you of how many more reps did you have left in the tank. All right, so our next tool is a mock meet. That sounds pretty straightforward, right? You basically work up to a max. But one of the values that a mock meet provides is one, there's no structure. You can work up to a fourth attempt if you need to. So for example, let's say you were working up to 200 kilos and you thought that 200 kilos was your top set and that was gonna be a 10 RPE, but then you find out it moved a whole lot easier than you thought. There's no rules, do a fourth attempt. Mock meets provide you an opportunity to really test the waters and really push yourself. Now, again, I mentioned safety in the last tool. I think you should take the same precautions here. Make sure your safeties are set, have training partners, have spotters, but a mock meet can really serve to help you to really push it and see how many more reps you have left in the tank. And also, what does an RPE 10 feel like? We don't always get that opportunity and we often don't in training and probably shouldn't, but a mock meet can serve as an opportunity to really push it and feel what an RPE 10 is like. Also with mock meets, one of the things that might happen is you might find that when you're working up to a maximal attempt, all those RPE eights that you were rating during your training cycle might've been nine or nine and a halfs. So mock meets serve as that valuable tool to help you to become more informed with where your top end is in terms of strength. And the last tool that I wanna talk about, which may come as a surprise, is training partners. Having a consistent training partner or coach who can put their eyes on you and watch you lift and are familiar with what does your squat look like when you get close to a 10 RPE can be invaluable information. So on days when you're warming up and things feel heavy, having a training partner who can call you out and say, hey man, you need to add weight to the bar. That can be so helpful. Now I'll, I'll tell you a quick story. I was training with Mike Desheer and we've trained a number of times together and I didn't have my phone set up to take video review. I did have my velocity device and I was deadlifting. And I started warming up, started working up, and things felt a little heavy. And I took what was gonna be my last warm up, and Mike came over to me afterward and he said, you know, hey, what are you working up to today? And I told him that my plan was to take a single at an eight. And I said, you know, I think I might actually stop here. And he goes, good. 
I was gonna tell you that I thought that that was your top set for the day. Now that feedback really helped me because it reaffirmed what my perception was in the moment without having video review. Again, I couldn't re-see the, the, the lift, I couldn't watch it back. So having him there give his perception after watching me, coaching me, knowing what my lift looks like, and the bar velocity, those two marrying up plus my perception allowed me to say, you know what? I'm experiencing some fatigue. Today, that last warm up is the top set. Now, if I kept going, who knows how much more fatigue I would have added and how that could have impacted future training sessions. So having a consistent training partner or coach who can put their eyes on you can be really helpful in the moment in making the next best decision. Should you go up? Should you add more load? Should you stop where you're at? Should you take load off the bar? It's a very valuable tool, one that we probably don't even consider. All right, so we talked about a lot today. We talked about what RPE is, stands for Rating of Perceived Exertion. We talked about how you should rate that when you're done with a set, not during. You should be focused on technical execution while you're lifting. We talked about some supplemental tools that you could use to get better at rating RPE, like video review, bar velocity, AMRAPs, mock meets, and having a consistent training partner and coach to help you give their perception. Now, one of the things I want you to remember is that rating RPE accurately is a skill, and it takes time. The more that you do it, the better you're going to get at it. Now, if you'd like to learn more about how to accurately rate RPE in your training, I've got two articles for you. The first one is by Coach Ross about some common roadblocks to accurately rating your RPE. And the second is an article by Mike talking about how to use and rate RPE correctly in your training. Now, if you still need some help, all of the RTS coaching staff are experts in rating RPE. It's actually quite common for us to take athletes and help them to get better at this skill. So if you want help, we're here to help you. Thanks everyone and we'll catch you next time.